Hi, welcome to my new video about a new antenna that I bought into my new QTH. It's temporary QTH. Maybe, as you know, we moved from our uh, previous QTH. We uh, we was living in the apartment building. Currently, we are living uh, in the village and maybe you know this place. I was uh, recording the video, uh, the, the live stream from this place. And today, I would like to show you a new antenna. A new antenna arrived from uh, Spain and I purchased the Falcon Out 250B or Bravo. They uh, described that the antenna is multiband antenna will work or should work from 80 meters to 6 meters on all bands, ham bands included WARC bands. So, it would be great if this antenna will work as they described and finally I will have some proper antenna here on this, on this new temporary QTH. So, let's open the box. It's a problem to take out this antenna outside. Okay, there it is. All right, so it's it's really well packed in the plastic boat uh, in the plastic bag, and here we have the uh, brand of this of this antenna. So you can see here it's the OUT 250 Bravo antenna HF and the length 7.13 meters and frequency bandwidth 3.5 megahertz up to 57 megs. So looks like a good antenna. We'll see. So what we have what do we have inside the box? Okay, so some some uh, uh, metallic parts, screws, bolts and probably this is for uh, fitting the tubes and fixing the tubes and here on the bottom So here we can we can find this black box and inside should be a unun for matching the antenna. Okay, so firstly let me say something about my feeling and opinions about the materials used on this antenna. So as you can see the holder of, of this antenna is made of uh, steel which is uh, painted by some kind of anti-corrosive uh, layer and uh, the black uh, take a black color and the plastic used 
on the transformer looks also really good I feel like feel like it's a good material and also you can see that the details are very very well made on the enclosure which is good because this uh, black enclosure should be a waterproof and looks like all fitting fine no gaps or anything so as you can see here they used a stainless steel uh, bolts and uh, screws which is which is good um, I think I, I seen something like this on the diamond antennas uh, I have a diamond X 300 and had the same screws and the top or this is like a this is like a bushing or something here on top it's also made of plastic and there is a warm screw inside and also the anti-corrosive screws so materials looks fine really good and on the bottom of the antenna we can find the cap for the SO239 uh, socket or the PL socket on the bottom of this antenna okay so let's look closer on the antenna manual what we found inside the bag and uh, here we can see the out 250 uh, the brand uh, the model of this antenna and describing how to mount the antenna from the parts included in the package and the specification of the antenna which is really interesting we see the bands 6 included the WARC and 80 meters as the top band of this antenna transmitting should work between 3.5 and 57 megs but receiving should be able to from, from 2 megahertz up to 90 megahertz maximum power 250 watts SSB 125 watts on FM I'm using the ICOM 7610 which is all good for this antenna 100 watts output impedance of the antenna 50 ohms and the SWR should be better than 1.5 on the bands hmm let's see connector is the PL connector length of the antenna 7.13 the weight of the antenna 3 kilograms and this is really interesting the wind speed rating 30 meters per second this is amazing okay uh, 30 meters uh, it should be uh, something I don't know right now the mass diameter is um, from 25 to 42 millimeter width so I hope that I have some kind of this kind of mast diameter and assembling of the antenna looks really simple uh, I just need to use a u-bolts and some um, some screws and here the elements are mounted or fixed by these two or the pair of the rings so there inside the box should be three pairs of the rings with the screws on each one so I will show you these rings so you can see here we have a uh, three sizes of the rings this is the biggest the second and third they are the smallest the smallest ones and the u-bolts and washers so here we have it 
Okay, so we can try to assemble this antenna. Before we start assembling this antenna, we need two assembling keys, number 13 and number 10. We need to find pairs with the same size of these rings and each ring is assembled by the screw and you need a 10 assembling key for the screws. Okay, and the other ones and the bigger. So we have to start with the uh, wider pipe and each pipe has on its end two holes so we need to put these rings over the holes and just a, a bit lock. Not much, just lock these rings. Also, the same thing on the others' pipes. And the last step is to put these pipes inside each other. And that's it. Now just use the assembling key, number 10. And yeah, be sure that this uh, inner pipe is uh, long enough to be uh, locked by these two screws inside. And we can achieve this by screw this screw maximally this is the maximum okay now unlock the screw and pull the pipe inside maybe maybe here at maybe two centimeters we should we should go somewhere here to this position so the same pull inside the pipe Right, and lock the screws. All right, so, and the same procedure, procedure we have to repeat on the rest of the antenna. So again, lock the screw. And back. Pull about two centimeters inside. And lock. Same here. Okay.
and that's it we're done so assembly looks really uh, simple very easy to make just uh, two keys and I guess maybe five minutes and the final assembly is the u-bolts what we have here in the small box and they should be put inside these four holes in the mounting on the mounting plate so Firstly, we have to use the uh, big washer, then the spring washer, and the nut. Yeah, same thing with the others. Okay, so assembly is complete and to tight uh, the screws you can use the uh, 13 assembly key. Well, and here you can see complete antenna. Pretty tall. Nice. Okay, and now let's lift the antenna up. It's a really big one. And I have a little tip for you and I will use it also here I will use the self volcanic tape uh, to prevent um, the uh, water going inside the pipes of course this antenna is equipped by the hole here come here by the hole here so the water should go out from from this hole but I know that the water in the gaps between the pipes uh, maybe will make some corrosion and uh, some resistance between those both uh, pipes uh, between them so it should make a problems maybe in the future with the antenna Okay, so I'm going to measure the real length of this antenna. Antenna is fully assembled and here you can see the length. It's uh, 7 meters to the plastic box with the unun on the bottom and total length to the end, to the bottom of the uh, um, mounting uh, plate is 7.13 or 14 meters so as was described in the manual Okay, it's ready for installation. All right, so the antenna has been installed already and now I can show you how it looks like. So as you can see the base of the antenna and the vertical itself. 
location of the vertical is in the backyard of the, of the house and antenna is located very close to the tree so I hope that the that the tree will not make many troubles to this antenna so the base of the antenna is fixed to the to the rod and this rod is inside the second rod so let me show you in detail how I did fixing these rods these two rods are fixed with the screw I just drilled hole through the rods and fixed them with this screw this way I reached a height about three meters off the ground which is not an ideal but still better than nothing And finally, you can see here the wide angle view of this antenna installation. All right, so I found my analyzer and it's time to make a measurement the SWR on this vertical antenna. Here is a little choke the two turns of this coaxial feed line and about five or maybe six meter long cable is going to to this little antenna analyzer okay so let me turn on this rig and let's see what parameters has this antenna and scan I've selected wide range 1.8 to 31.8 wow you see that that is not bad at all uh, I think the best uh, SWR 1.4 is on 3.825 which is on 80 meter band and the other bands are something around 1.5 and the upper frequencies like 24 28 29 and 30 they are uh, below the line 2 so I can say that SWR plot is in whole bands below 2 and above 1.5 instead of 80 meters that is not really bad that is really good because I I can use a tuner in my transceiver uh, in worst case okay and uh, let's see what is the others and we're back on SWR plot and we can't forget on 6 meter band so let's get back to sweep and here I choose the 50 megahertz up to 52 megahertz and scan so let's see All right, so something between 1.8 and 2 is the SWR here on 6 meters. So also not bad and especially I can use a tuner in my transceiver. Very good.
So let's see the other options. Oh, it doesn't look much good. All right, but that is the six meter band. All right, so my next test will be a real test with the radio transceiver. I'm comparing the uh, Falcon vertical antenna, which is directly connected to the short cable, maybe five meter long coaxial RG58. And the second cable is going to the uh, magnetic loop antenna, MC20. And this antenna is just about one meter, one meter about the ground. So, here I have the antenna switch, AB switch. Uh, the A is the vertical, the B is the magnetic loop. And the short cable is going from the switch here to the my, to the transceiver X5105 and I'm listening on 20 meters stations uh, which sounds like an Indian station and the other station is uh, coming from the UK I believe because I'm not sure I, I didn't hear the, I didn't hear their call signs So I'm going to switch. This is the magnetic loop. Vertical. Mag loop. Vertical. Mag loop. Vertical. Mag loop, vertical, mag loop. I have feeling that the mag loop is one S point better than the vertical. Or at least the same. Vertical. So now we can hear the counter station very barely vertical no station no signal mag loop yeah that i don't remember uh, vertical mag loop vertical Mag loop, vertical, mag loop, vertical, mag loop. So, as you can see, that comparison between the magnetic loop on the right side and the Falcon vertical on the left side, the results are almost the same, but there is a uh, little higher noise or the background noise we can check the background noise on the clear frequency let's say here i have to tune uh, i have to tune uh, the swr here on on uh, the magnetic loop because you can see that i'm a little bit off still Okay, so I'm on the center of this frequency. Now I will switch to the vertical. You can see the SWR and the vertical. This is the vertical. And the magnetic loop. So 
both antennas are 101 or 1.1 as WR so this is the background noise on the uh, magnetic loop the B background noise something around 3 or between 3 to 4 and now the vertical also the same between uh, 3 to 4 magnetic loop vertical okay so it seems that the uh, background noise is the same on both antennas of course it depends on the direction where is the magnetic loop heating now I am switching to the magnetic loop and I will I will turn the antenna in the directions we can see the noise you can see the noise turning 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 yeah this is the best point we are under three and turning back and we're back between three and four all right so Vertical is receiving the noise and the signals omnidirectional, so it, it's it's receiving all those things from the all directions around. Okay, we, here we have a portable station from Greece. I have switch to the antenna B so the magnetic loop I have to turn my mag loop to the south it's there some somewhere there all right and I can try to call him I have to tune the antenna. So antenna is tuned it. And now I can try to make contact with him. Oscar Mike Zero, Echo Tango QRP. Oscar Mike Zero, Echo Tango. QRP, QRP, Oscar Mike Zero, Echo Tango. Oscar Mike Zero, Echo Tango QRP. Oscar Mike Zero, Echo Tango QRP. Okay, thank you for 5x7. Please, uh, second antenna, please. Antenna 2, okay? Antenna 2, okay? He's going QRT. One minute, QRX. I think he's quite a busy. I think he will not have much time to wait. Uh, because I want to make comparison. All right, so that was the results. The AB comparison between the uh, Falcon out 250 antenna and the uh, small magnetic lube antenna MC20. I'm a bit disappointed of the results of the antenna vertical because I was um, expecting a little bit more gain than 
my magnetic loop antenna. You can see that the vertical is about maybe three meters above the ground. But there is the big problem, I guess. I think there is the big problem with the uh, uh, with this uh, transformer on the bottom of the antenna. Looks like that this transformer has a big loss. And it turns to the uh, very expensive dummy load. Hmm. And that's not really... Re that's not really good news for me because I need to use about 50 meters coaxial feed line which I have prepared here already and I have to count with some loss also in this cable so in the final the signal coming out from the antenna will be weaker even weaker than the signal from the magnetic loop antenna and that's really not good news for me. I have a plan B. Um, I would like to uh, I would like to uh, uh, connect the automatic antenna tuner MFJ993 and connect this tuner directly uh, uh, directly to the pipe somewhere somewhere there about the uh, about the transformer box and to make like something like NFED antenna I guess that the automatic tuner has a bit less loss like this transformer all right so I did modification of the Falcon out 250 as you can see, there is added the MFJ Auto Tuner 993 BRT and uh, between the antenna, uh, I show you, there is the a short wire between the antenna and the tuner, uh, which connects the aluminium pipe of this vertical only and the outer tuner so I'll we'll show you from the another side one moment from the back side you can see connections so it's the Ultraflex 7 coaxial feed line connected to the BRT993 and there is the antenna socket and the wire going up to the antenna as you can see there were there were two screws and I unscrewed one of them and connected the uh, wire to the auto tuner all right so I hope that this modification will work for me